This video is sponsored by Narrative. Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heish, and today we are going to go over an incredible piece of software that's honestly been a game changer for me as a professional wedding and elopement photographer and my friends who are, you know, have a background in wedding photography and everything like that have come up with a company called Narrative and specifically this program called Select uses AI to do some incredible stuff. Um, and honestly, before they even reached out to me about doing a video, it was on my list of videos to make just because I'm just fascinated by the software and the whole process of everything. You know how much time that you spend editing and especially culling. So kind of selecting which images we are going to take and edit out of all the photos that we've actually taken at a wedding or an elopement or an event or whatever it might be. So let's jump in, make a quick project and kind of see what this program does. And you can let me know in the comments below if you feel like it lives up to the hype that I am kind of putting behind it. So here we go. We're gonna make this select folder be the folder that we do. Confirm project folder, create project. We'll go with select, sure. Now, so the program, what it's going to do is going to import all of the files and then it's gonna go through and do assessments on each image and make a bunch of ratings for you, which is pretty ridiculous and sort of the magic behind the software. So Narrative Select has artificial intelligence that automatically detects faces and it gives you two different readings on those faces and assessments of them to kind of give you an idea of what's going on uh, in the image and what to be looking for. So the bottom little section, you can actually see it gives you a, if you kind of hover over it, it gives you a score kind of out of 100. So the top part that looks kind of like an eye is the amount of the eye that is actually open. So what it can do is you can let you know really, really easily if someone actually just has their eyes closed. I know that a lot of the time I'm editing out and kind of culling through images where people have their eyes closed. So, you know, having a direct obvious way of seeing that with a red or, you know, yellow or green, it kind of moving through there so you know how, you know, kind of much the person is looking towards the camera or has their eyes open. And then the bottom portion is how the image is in focus, but then it gives you this image assessment that SMART kind of goes through and tells you whether or not a photo is more or less likely to be one that you want to keep. And so it says it's fairly likely that there are better images in this four image scene. So it's stinking brilliant because it assesses the content of the scenes and shows me, okay, I got these four photos that are pretty similar and then it'll go through and let you know whether or not there are better or worse photos in that scene. And what you can do is go up to this filters area right here and let's say you just want to trust the software and just get rid of all of those. So out of the 84 images, 67 of them have you know, no warnings basically. And so one of the things you can do is just straight up eliminate a bunch of the photos right off the bat in your initial cull. And then what I've done uh, oftentimes is just eliminated those and then gone through afterwards and found the ones, went and looked at the ones that had some sort of warning just to kind of double check. Because this one in particular, like, yes, their eyes are both closed or like, they're because they're looking down at the sand as they walk, but I do like the photo, so it's one that I would deliver. And so it's nice to kind of go back and look at that thing. Um, but it's just brilliant that it can, it can see what photos are kind of in a sequence and let you know which ones you kind of should or shouldn't keep. The way that I go about actually kind of selecting my images is just very simple. I don't make a bunch of different colors or filters or anything like that. Uh, I just hit one if I want to keep the image and I don't click anything and I don't select any other bit of it if I don't want to keep it. And I find that the idea and the mindset behind figuring out which images I want to keep uh, versus which images I want to get rid of is actually better because then it makes me more selective and ends up with a better sort of end result product at the end of the day. So. That's kind of my thought process and the way I go about culling things. So it'll go through and give me this, you know, these images and some slight ratings. So as I'm going, I can see what's going on. 
So if I wanna keep this photo, I just hit one. So the program itself will actually eliminate those extra clicks if you would like it to. So you can just select one and then it will automatically go to the next image. Every little click and every little thing that you can do to save time is invaluable. There was one part of my workflow years ago where I realized that if I changed one part of it, I would save 40 hours a year. And so, you know, just every little bit of your workflow that you can improve is amazing. And this particular program definitely does that in a lot of ways. So this first image worked really well. The second one, a little bit more blurry, don't really like it. Third one, you're starting to see that it is selecting that her eyes are partially open. And we'll get into this more later, but you can see over here in this close-up panel, this is where it just like starts to blow my mind. So again, it recognizes faces, but then will automatically select and allow you to zoom into those faces and many times in other programs, I'd be selecting through and then have to zoom in and then move the cursor to figure out what things are in critical focus. The AI in this software actually detects every face that is like pretty visible in the scene and it gives you that as a close up. So you can actually call with the original image and with just the faces to know how critical focus is working. So the software in this particular thing, like Shaw's face down here is 76 nearly in focus, so 76 out of 100. And I think that's pretty accurate. Like, it's enough that I think I would still deliver this photo, but it's definitely not in perfect focus. But anytime it's kind of close to that green area, it allows me to know that, yeah, this is probably good enough to send out to a client. So as you're going through you know, a selection of images, it's just amazing to be able to see all of them in series, the main photo in the middle, and then the close-ups of their faces, like, it is just mind blowing how good the software is at recognizing and knowing the things that you actually want to look at. And I honestly do credit it to the fact that uh, the people that make Narrative Select are actually photographers themselves. And so they know exactly what a photographer and specifically a wedding photographer uh, or a portrait photographer or something like that would actually want to be looking at and seeing in this. So you can see like I've starred this one and then the next one, uh, gives me this little warning knowing that within that sequence there are other better photos. And so it's just like amazing that it can kind of distill those images out for you if you would like, because you know, this photo is the one that I wanted out of this sequence. And then it just knows that these two other ones like aren't exactly the greatest because these guys both don't really have their eyes open. And then it moves back to these ones where they're in focus. And so it knows that like this one beforehand is the keeper, this one's not the one I want, you know? And so it's just amazing that it is able to do that for you. So here is where the software like just really, really gets crazy. For me, one of the most like annoying things about doing a wedding and then culling those photos specifically is like the family groupings when there's 20, 30 people and I'm just like having to look through and figure out is everyone actually looking? Is everyone smiling? Is everyone have their eyes open? And so this stuff figures out so much more than my old version of doing this manually that is just amazing. So this is kind of the death of me, right? Like there are just a ton of different faces and you just never really know what's working and what's not. Shot on a 21 millimeter lens. It's just amazing that it can pull this out. and. I know that like this is a sponsored video and everything like that, but it's honestly blows my mind because of the amount of time I've spent doing this via other means and the amount of time I've spent and wasted uh, just zooming into all these different faces to try to figure out which one to actually keep. Now I can look and see, okay, everyone has their eyes open. I'll select this one and I can just skip the rest because I don't need to look through all the duplicates that I took to make sure that everyone had their eyes open. And then what's brilliant, once you're getting into a kind of smaller set of images, I'll move myself down a little bit here. You know, once you're, you're moving into a set of images that has, you know, a little bit more uh, of a subject in it, it zooms straight into those faces and can let you know, you know how you're doing here. Uh, obviously me and, you know, grandma probably weren't doing the best here because she wasn't too stoked on uh, my photo taking skills apparently. But for me, I know I took like four different photos here, but this first one, everyone's looking at the camera, everyone has a good expression. 
for the most part, everyone's in focus. Um, and so I can just select that one and then skip the next few because I already know that one's great, right? For this particular thing, uh, sorry, Kaya, who's a friend of mine and an amazing photographer, her eyes are closed. And so it tells me right off the bat here, A, I can see it here that her eyes are closed, or B, I can do it by having the second panel open to see the zoomed in faces specifically. And then I can obviously see her eyes are closed and then it's an image that I won't wanna keep. So here is another set where it's kind of going through and figuring out which ones in the series are gonna be the best. So this one I actually do like, so I, I do enjoy kind of being able to keep this as, I like to see which ones the program thinks are good and bad. Uh, but you can see that it's already brilliant, so it knows that there's a better one in this series, but as a series where there's movement, I want to kind of keep a lot of these. But the next image, it tells me <laughs> that this is not the good one. You can definitely see right here, obviously, a lot of people's eyes and faces aren't exactly the best in this. Um, and so it knows and tells me right off the bat that this one's probably not one that I'm gonna wanna keep, which is, again, just crazy to me that it knows and can figure out that for you before you even go through this. Another thing that I really love about this program too is it gives you the option up here to see all the keyboard shortcuts. I know this is a little bit off topic right now, um, but it gives you the option to see the keyboard shortcuts right there. But also when you go to click an image or an icon or something, you're moving up, it gives you the shortcut right there. And again, as someone who is trying to get through a lot of images quickly and as efficiently as possible, learning all the keyboard shortcuts is brilliant and I love that it allows you to see the shortcut and what it is and then oftentimes if you go and actually click it it'll say hey next time click this button instead and then you'll start to learn the keyboard shortcuts and it'll improve your workflow so I like that the program itself is actually trying to sort of guide you through um, and help you move along your path into a better workflow so once you have actually gone through and selected all your images. Another just kind of brilliant part about this is you can go up here and just click ship and then it'll send it straight to Lightroom. As you pull it up, it'll give you some kind of interesting information. So you can choose Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC. You can choose which catalog you want to use um, and you can choose which images you actually want to send in case you kind of have different ways you wanna do it. And so it just makes the whole workflow process a little bit more streamlined because you know it knows that this isn't the end all be all, this is just the thing that's helping you select everything. And then you're obviously gonna take those photos that you've selected, move it on and actually go and start editing those. So hopefully this was helpful. I know for a lot of people, a lot of us spend even more time kind of selecting and culling our images than we actually do editing. And so anything that can help the workflow and the process is obviously amazing. And if you're interested in using the software, I have a link down below that can take you to the site. You can download the software for free. And then if you want to use the pro version uh, of Select Pro, the link down below will give you 10% off of that subscription. And honestly, again, I could not recommend it enough and I'm just stoked to be able to be using this and speeding up my workflow, which gives me more time, honestly, to do videos and things like this. So thanks again. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you on the next one.